we have this and we are recording. So welcome to the uh, fourth meeting of the DAPS uh, working group. Um, just to give some context, as I know there's some new faces here, uh, the focus of this working group is really to make um, uh, developers who are working on DAPS um, their work easier and to get a deeper sort of implementation and, and with IPFS. Um, and, and so we have some of the folks here from the IPFS shipyard team um, and uh, also the IPFS ecosystem working group. And, and really, uh, we have made sort of a concerted effort to make the, the experience of working um, and deploying dApps to IPFS better. And uh, with that, uh, we have the meeting notes, which you can find here. Um, I'll drop them also into the chat once again, in case you didn't. Um, we're using HackMD, so you just need to log in if you want to contribute um, and help writing the notes or add anything to the agenda. And with that, I think it would be good to, to since we don't have a lot of the people who normally join, like Ed from Liquid, Liquid, Liquidity, I think it might be a good uh, moment for us to just revisit some of the discussion items that we had in the previous session last year, that was. Um, and it might also be good to, uh, from that, um, to continue and, and maybe discuss some of the ongoing items that we have open. It's a shame that we don't have some of the folks working on them from the Helia working group. But uh, yeah, let's, let's take a look back. I'll probably share my screen here so that we can all see the meeting notes. Uh, uh, it's, it's... Okay, so here we have it. This is, so previously, um, Ed presented this app integrity verifier extension, extension that he had built in order to do the verification and off a payload extension. And for that, he was using, I believe, the debugger API. And um, I think he had the inside the browser extension, Lytle especially in terms of uh, getting some more feedback um, on how he's doing the uh, verification. So actually this was just the initial payload, but I believe he was using one of the APIs, which was, um, sorry. Okay, I think screen sharing think is killing my audio. The, the Chrome debugger API is what's that's yeah. being used here. And I think there's some like, what are the what are the gotchas? What are the gotchas here uh, that we need to worry about? And like, are there ways to are there ways to work around them so that we we do have like a way of of moving the um, moving like the the trust anchor into into an extension rather than into a domain name if we can avoid it. Um, yeah, I, I had a very brief look before the meeting, um, not as in depth as I wanted, but, uh, I think the main caveat around the, the debugger API is that it enables very expensive code paths in Chromium. So effectively you pay the penalty. Just like when you open the browser console, uh, suddenly your browser, on a less expensive hardware, you will notice your page executes and loads way, way slower. And it's kind of like similar. In this case, you ask a browser to do more work and there is uh, some performance penalty. At least it was a while ago when I checked this API out. Um, it's it's used by web recorder for uh, taking high resolution uh, snapshot of the page load that you can replay later. So for that use case, it's like acceptable to get that penalty. 
when it comes to your regular app user, that penalty hits you in the worst case, like in the worst point, which is the initial page load, which is already the slowest because uh, you don't have anything cached, then you added this additional penalty. It's probably not as big penalty as cache means. And if we limit that to this uh, service worker loader installer that we've discussed in the previous past, like past weeks, uh, if it's limited only for loading those uh, few assets, it may be acceptable, but it's uh, that's like my main flag. There's a potential hit on that. And another one is that it only gives us ability to detect uh, faulty response. It does not allow us to recover using a different gateway or by loading the, the data from IPFS because there's no way for injecting different bytes. We can only detect that the bytes do not match the signature, which was hard coded in a direct extension or fetched from like external Oracle uh, and say, hey, sorry, this DAP is not, the integrity does not match, but there's no like what's next for the user. Um, those are my initial thoughts, but I, as I said, I had a very brief uh, window of time to look at it before the meeting. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just getting those notes down. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's useful um, to know and, and also in terms of like having some kind of like a, if you fail to verify what do you do then and how you can handle that. Yeah, so there's like another thing like um, how we, how this thing could be packaged, productized, right? So one thing is like each DAP developer has their own extension. Uh, which acts as an oracle of blessed hashes. Um, or we have a convention for finding out what's the expected hash, right? So like we have those conventions, it could be DNS link, it could be uh, ENS, and you ha could have a hash there. Um, and that way it would not be an extension paired up, but we could have something generic. It could be integrated to, into wallets or maybe it could be uh, a generic extension and uh, people just install one thing and get that verification. Um, but that still uh, probably is limited to just integrity check without ability to fall back. Yeah, my, my guess is what you'd probably want is like a, you know, basically public, you know, the public infrastructure that loads that loads like a very small page that has the the JavaScript or whatever in it that gets you bootstrapped, um, and that that's hopefully enough, um, so that you don't have to do it per DAP. Right, the rest of the DAPs can all be using um, can just use CIDs and they can sort of bootstrap their trust from there. Um, that would be my. I hope I know it has issues if in terms of like if you know uh what the you know if what happens if there's an issue with the the public infrastructure and then you can maybe make that configurable like we do gateways but just where the sort of the the version is fixed um of the the code that's emitted um you know again what would it would be nicer if you could do the IPFS thing inside the ex in, in, from the extension and say you didn't get it and like return the result. But uh, unless we can convince uh, convince browser vendors to let us use the blocking API at least a little bit, uh, then uh, I guess we'll be stuck with this. Um, do you do you know? Is the blocking API totally going away, or is it just being limited to things where they're where they're like uh, limited to like high high trust environments? Yeah, it's always like you know, enterprise uh, users will have option to keep it open for the next few years, but it's it's going away. But the thing is, like the the blocking API does not help us, even if it was still around, and if Google did not decide to go with manifest v three. 
uh, the blocking API allows us to only either block or redirect. We are not able to inject bytes. So it's the same situation. We can, are able to tell to the user, hey, this integrity did not work or redirect to a local like gateway or some software which does the, the verification. Um, yeah, for 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 being able to, so so it's kind of like it's not like we had this opportunity that it was taken away from us. It was like we had some abilities and but they did not fully close the loop, and now we have less. Um, I mean, like we effectively functionally can do the same things, but with extra steps. Uh, that's kind of like an, everyone knows that about manifest v three is you. Like every browser extension can still like snoop on you, track you. The, 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 there's no security benefit. It's just with extra steps. The actual benefit is that the, your browser does eat less of your battery, thanks to the, like the declarative uh, rules. There's like there's actual value in that. There's it's like it takes more resources uh, to have many extensions, but uh, the security arguments are a bit bogus. Uh, what we need is the thing that I just linked. It's effectively, you know, being able for a browser extension to inject the bytes. And one way we propose to tackle that is to extend existing um, browser extension capabilities to be able to register our own protocol handler, which is not a redirect to some HTTP server, but just register our own handler for our own protocol and be able to be responsible for the bytes return under that schema and have origin isolation per the authority component under that. Um, yeah, we have a prototype. Uh, this is a based on the existing API in Firefox. Uh, that API is on the redirect based, but uh, you know it's easier to build on top of existing abstractions and it builds heavily on top of them rather than inventing something new. I think if there is a path forward for Kind of like closing the functionality gap, that's the best shot we have. Um, but it will take time. So I agree right now, uh, the the debugger and being able to detect integrity failure through that for that initial payload is probably the best we can abuse existing APIs. Um, but that abuse probably is limited to, like it's a very limited window to those, uh, to the initial payload. Oh, do you mind if I give some input? Yep. Um, I can tell you that this year I've been spending a lot of time on like this kind of issue in general. Um, a lot of what he just said, I basically already I already figured out the hard way. Um, and one of the earliest attempts I tried to do in this and type of like kind of man in the middle hijacking for for like web three browsing is that the other fact is that even without manifest three. The one key difference between Firefox and Chrome is Firefox's uh, web, uh, Firefox's um, uh, man in middle APIs, basically network APIs, they allowed async. So you can't, even if you could have done this in Chrome, you couldn't actually do anything, even the background pages, without a lot of weird hacks because you can't, it required a blocking function. You couldn't do async at all. So there'll be no way to actually. Have it wait in the background to actually process things. I actually had one of my first earlier prototypes. I had to um, go to a loading page, let the loading page talk to a background page over a over a post message, then redirect backwards once it was in memory. So, and Firefox is frankly the only uh, the only system that allows this more fully. But since Firefox has no user base, and my attempts caused apparently a high CPU on my first prototype. It really just comes down to the fact that we're kind of in we're kind of in a um, hard place of you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Yeah, yeah, you you, you kind of like hit that uh, the worst case scenario that manifest v two v three and the declarative uh, rules aim to solve, right? It's kind of like that. Uh, you you could do that. Uh, you could do. Uh, creative hacks around that and but the behavior between Firefox and the Chromium is different uh, yeah it, yeah yeah the only reason I was able to do some of the things I did uh, uh in some of my uh r d this year was because of Firefox apis and after that it basically from a from a basically from a um 
from a uh, basically from uh, it had no one gave a shit, and so I had to pivot. But the out, but the outcome from other learning was just that Firefox might have it, but it was, but but I'll also say honestly, even if you could do some Firefox, Firefox developers' experience is so crappy. I don't even want to work inside of it. Like it, it was literally like. It, it was literally hell. Like I, I want to run. I don't want to build in Firefox even if, even if it did work. <laughs> so it comes down to the fact that um, yeah, basically the only thing way forward is just figuring out a way to get this done in Chrome. Unfortunately, uh, it's still better than than Zool. <laughs> it's still better, better than what? Uh, there was like before Manifest V2, there were Zool extensions which were just. No, like, well, it's not. It's not. Well, it's not even about you about the extensions. It's a. It's. Firefox's developer tools are bad. Like the debugging engine, the like trying to work with web workers, trying to hunt things down, trying to debug things in weird cases. The debugger doesn't refresh properly at the time when you're trying to do breakpoints. The, the whole rendering engine, it's just basically put it this way: the debug tools in Chrome and V8, they just work, and you can basically track track between five different places. And it doesn't break your workflow when you're in your um in your context when you're trying when you're trying to debug things. So my experience in Firefox was that I got it working, but it took me but it gave me gray hairs. Understand? Yeah. So um, I'm yeah. So I'm just saying that yeah. Basically, what I'm saying is that um the, the main reason this couldn't have been done in Firefox in Chrome in the first place before V3 was because you didn't have async ability. It didn't allow async functions. So yeah, even if you could do a Firefox, it's not good. It It's just not, it, developers would not have fun with it. Even if Firefox could be done, put it that way. Yeah, and yeah, I've been it, spending my year yeah. on it. Yeah, that's true. But still, uh, you could do that, but you then have uh, to have an extension per website or per DAP because you have only a one origin. You could re redirect to the page. Like well, page. no, not necessarily. What I the things I actually did were actually it was actually a full web browser, a full web browsing system that supported um, basically any. I it supported IPFS and it supported ENS and it supported Handshake. It like the systems I had was like a full like a mini demo that supported multiple networks and it was all self contained in, inside Firefox. So it, it is possible. But the problem is the Firefox developer. It's just it was the 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 experience in doing it was so bad that I just that, and no one wants to install Firefox. That even if it was easy, there was no there was no adoption period. Yeah. Like I couldn't get five people. I couldn't get five people testing the system put that way. Yeah, uh, if if you mind dropping uh, like reference, uh, I'd like to like take a look. I think how you solve the origin isolation. Oh, the, oh, the, oh, that, the, oh, that's kind of simple. Um. It, you just use you use a I um puts what have you ever I'm not sure how how many people look across ecosystems but does the name but does does the name Saya or Skynet Labs ring a bell to you? They ring, but I don't know how they connect to original. Yeah, yeah uh, but I'm saying, do you know who the do you know the, who those entities are? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, David Vorek or or basically Tack. He invented something called a he called a kernel, which I basically forked after Skynet went bankrupt. And I've been work and I've been developing and I've been extending on on what he made. And effectively, it uses the man in the middle to create a fake origin to uh, load certain things. And then on top of that, it uses that to load. Um, on top of that, it uses the load. Um, it uses the load uses web workers in the background. So it a lot of so it basically kind of acts as its own mini web browser inside of a web browser, and I have archived the code now. I can I can link it since it frankly didn't go anywhere, but it was part of my it was part of my grant funding this year. So yeah, but so, um, so so, so, I've already, so, I, so I've been so I I've kind of been down all this route in advance. That's why I'm here because I've basically gone through all variations of possibilities. And I talked, and I've, and I've been, and I've been uh, collaborating with Ed and talking to him the past couple months because he's because he's on my Discord server, and so I've been going through all this and trying to figure and just trying to figure all uh, all this out. I've been because I've been solving this. I've been working on this problem probably two years now, from uh, solo. Um, 
I'll and I'm trying to pull the repo up and I'll share and I'll share it in the chat. Yeah, yeah, I think it would be useful to take a look. I think probably don't want to like take more time. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. here. Thanks. Uh, yep. This is uh, this is in the Firefox repo, but it requires infrastructure that, um, and this is actually old, a bit older because it didn't it doesn't have code that it kind of made in Q four, but it, well, but it, it sh but it should point to an it should point to enough um um enough that you should be able to figure it out and if you have questions you can just ping me about it yeah thanks um yeah i i'm especially like interested in details of the uh, origin isolation but you know they're, they're in the details and that's something that takes time to analyze so thanks i will take a look yeah the key for origin of the isolation isolation i see is just frankly using the man in the middle ability to basically create fake origins yeah, but is it like HTTP proxy or are you my? No, uh, no, uh, no. It's a uh, the, the uh, yeah. It's using i it's using iframes heavily in some in some ways. But the um, but the key, but the one little quirk about things is that with Firefox is that it allows you to intercept the responses. You can't intercept the request. So you can you can catch a request, but you have to let the request go out to a dummy URL through via proxy even if it's a fake, and then you modify the response backwards. So you can't prevent the request from going out, but you can modify the response. And with that, you basically can make it do whatever you need it to do. So within those limitations, you can make something happen, but it's, it's definitely not perfect. But it's frankly more than Chrome allows you to do. Before or after V3. So yeah, but what it comes down to lib kernel, I'll I'll share you the I'll share you I'll share you two other links. Um this is my version of what this is my version of things. Uh this is my version of well, of working on things. And then here is here's the original Skynet version of code for reference of before um how, that was the that was um in, in early in back in early Q four um twenty twenty two. So you can see basically what I've done, and then you can see the efforts. You can see the efforts being done by Skynet alone. Right. Thanks. Uh, I I I guess like uh, we we can take a look at, uh, and get to back yep. to this. Uh, I think uh, like next week. Yeah. Yep. No problem. Just given my input, and because I've been basically kind of digging into this, uh, kind of on my own, with like no one really knowing for for years now. Yeah, no, thanks for thanks for sharing those insights. I've also dropped the links into the meeting notes, so we'll have them. We'll be able to dive deep. I hope you join also uh, for our yep. next session. Uh, yep. This year, I'm basically funded to create effectively the first open source IPFS. Pinner or gateway like to Saya, my funding means I'm going to basically create the first like basically, uh, community ran Penta or Web three storage, and so that's what I'm working on this year to launch to uh, to build and launch that as a service. So, yeah, I'm obviously interested because I'm kind of dealing with the because I'm dealing with the infrastructure and I'm dealing with the hosting this year. Okay, with that, um. We don't have much uh, more on the agenda. Um, one thing I was going to suggest is, I don't know if we have a lot of people joining from the West Coast, but I was going to suggest moving this working group meeting one hour earlier. Um, just want ga to gauge, like, generally, if folks would be able to still join if this were an hour earlier in the future. Yeah, I'm EFC negative five, so um, Eastern Standard, so it's eleven thirty four a.m. where I'm at. Yeah, maybe maybe via uh, you know, yeah, thumbs up emojis or thumbs down emojis or something will make it yeah, easier. Yeah. 
Yeah, I did not see thumbs down. Well, I didn't see any thumbs down. (laughs) Session. Um... Great. I think with that we can we, we can come to a wrap now. Um, I think again because we're missing a lot of the folks who normally join. I don't think there's much value in, in um, continuing the discussion right now. Uh, as always, we can follow async. Um, we have the uh, uh, Telegram channel in case anyone has a, a specific update, and we also have um, the notes published onto GitHub um, and. Uh, we also have the various uh, channels on Slack slash Discord slash uh, uh, Matrix. Um, so that includes the IPFS ecosystem, IP-JS. Um, these are some good channels if you have any thoughts or ideas and you want to share them. Um, but with that, I think we can end this. I'll stop sharing my screen and stop the recording.